Hello and welcome to this presentation on ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. We're going to look at element birth and combine that with a restart. This will allow various scenarios to be considered after some initial load steps that could take a long time. Here's a small toy-sized model, although the technique is intended for large models that take a very long time to solve. Let's go inspect the geometry in here. We have three bodies, one, two, and three like that. And the third body has had an APDL commands object applied. The first thing we do is remember the mat ID, or the material ID, for the elements in this body, and we're calling them solid underscore three, right here. Let me blow that up for visibility. We put in a title like this, so that if we read the output text file later on, it's easy to identify the results of these commands. And all I've done here for my own use was list the material properties that were applied for the elements in this model. Note that this particular example was set up to run in inches and pounds. When you use APDL commands, you have to be very careful that any units assumed in these commands are those used when the model is solved according to the unit setting up here and details down in the analysis settings. So all we've done in this particular commands object is memorize the mat ID for the elements in solid 3. Our meshing is quite simple, rather coarse mesh. And note that we dropped mid-side nodes. This is merely to make the model smaller for the purpose of illustrating quickly. Your work would be meshed according to the needs for accuracy in your model, and it would be quite common to employ mid-side nodes. Here are our analysis settings. Note that this is an analysis with two load steps. If we scroll down in the analysis settings, Let's open up a section called Restart Controls. In here, Generate Restart Points has been set to Manual, and we've chosen to create a restart for every load step. So when this model was solved, a result was saved for each load step that was taken that would allow a restart from that point. Look at what's been done to this model used in the first analysis. Let's go all the way down to this commands object. Now, what we're going to do is kill the elements in this third body. So, here's the commands object, and you can see we select the elements of that third body by the material ID, solid underscore three. That's what we set up here. This is the third body. Here's its command object. We remembered what the material ID was as solid underscore three. So now here we are killing these elements. Here is a commands object. It's been set to execute only in the first load step. And we select the elements of that body, kill them, and then we select everything so that we can go on and solve. Let's take a look at the loads in this model. First, there's a remote displacement back here, and all the movements have been set to zero. Next, we have thermal conditions. You can see 71.6 degrees in the first body. We're ramping up the temperature in the second body to 400. We're holding the third body at a constant 800 degrees. Now this is the body we kill, and in order to prevent a sudden extreme situation when it comes to life, we've set its reference temperature to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go back down. We have a pressure on body 2, it's pushing body 2 into body 1, and that's through all three load steps. And we have a pressure on body 3. Note that it's 0 in the first load step. It's because we're killing these elements, and we don't want a load on them at that time. Let's go back up and have a look at the connections in this model. We have a contact between solids 2 and 1. Note that we've put the contact on the smaller face, and that's been set to a frictional contact. One of the reasons for putting a pressure on this body 
was to push it into the first body. We have a frictional contact that's going to prevent it from flying off into space. We also have a frictional contact between bodies 3 and 2. Our problem is in our first load step, with no pressure there, nothing's going to hold it together. These elements have been killed, which means their modulus of elasticity will be extremely small, and the model will behave poorly. What we've done is use a little trick that may or may not be suitable or required in customer models. We've added a bonded contact, the same two faces, contact on the body that gets killed, target on the neighbor. We've increased the pinball. You can see how big it is. Notice it was set to bonded contact. Pure penalty. We happen to be using the Gauss points. We could have used nodes. And we've put in a manual normal stiffness value and made it extremely small right down at 5 times 10 to the minus 5. What we did was make it as small as possible without getting bad behavior by the model. That way the bonded contact does almost nothing and its effect is very small compared to the frictional contact but it stabilizes this third body when the body is killed. Let's go on down. So there's our pressure on the third body only active in the third load step. There's a second APDL command job deck. It is set to go off at load step number two. And let's have a detailed look at what it does. There's a header so that we can see it in the output. What are we doing at load step two? Well, we're finding out how many materials are in the model with this get command. We're creating a new material number, offsetting it by a thousand so it doesn't get confused with anything and setting up alternative material properties. We have to be very careful that these are the ones that are suited for the system of units employed when the solve takes place. We select the elements in that third body. In this example, I'm not changing the material properties. I am bringing those elements to life in the second load step, E alive to the elements in that third body select everything and let the analysis go on and solve the second load step with those elements brought to life. So what we have here is two load steps with these elements killed in the first load step, alive in the second, and we get deformations. You can see equivalent stresses, you can see strains, you can see deformation in bodies one and two, you could animate this Let's see what we have available. We've been saving substeps. You can see that pressure ramp up and then we hold the solution. The third body was not selected. We can also inspect what's been happening in our contact pairs. Set this up in advance. And our first contact pair is here. It's sticking the whole time because they were squeezed together in frictional contact. There was very little sliding. We have a frictional stress going out from the center. And we can see a pressure in there from about 1300 to 2100, and that's PSI. We'll look at the second contact pair. This is the frictional one. And you can see that the end of the second load step, that it is in a state of sticking. It was frictional. We also have a little sliding, very small amount. We have frictional stresses going out from the center. And you can see that there's a pressure in there, ranging from 7100 to 1600. It peaks on the edges because of stress concentration. Now, there was a third pair in there, the bonded one. And you can see that it's sticking everywhere. The frictional stress is extremely small because of that very low stiffness factor. Sliding distance is small. Straight pressure is very small. Much, much smaller than the pressure and frictional stress seen for the frictional pair. But what we found with experience was that we had to have this bonded contact to keep the killed body behaving properly. In other models, this may not be necessary. It depends on the nature of loading and the kinds of contacts that you have elsewhere.
So that's a look at the model in the first run with analysis settings organized to save restart points, but prior to executing the restart. We've completed a first analysis. Save the analysis under a unique file name that's easy to look up in the future and you'll have your complete first analysis with two load steps. Now let's go back to analysis settings and we'll set up in order to do a second analysis using a restart in this example from the first load step. If you've done a first analysis you'll see this restart analysis section in the analysis settings details. Our restart type we'll set it to manual current restart point. We know in this case that we want it at the end of load step 1, and there happen to be 10 substeps, so that's the point from which we will restart the analysis. We will not redo the first load step. Suppose that first load step took 50 or 100 hours of analysis time. Perhaps the second load step takes only 10 or 20. It would be very desirable to be able to reuse the first load step if it's the same load path up to that point. Here we are then. The substepping in the second load step will be as before in this example. Choose our solver. Other things, do we want large deflection and so on. Restart controls, well, they've already been set. It would still be setting for a possible restart at the end of each load step. Output controls are the same. So what's changing in the loads we apply? We're going to use the same load history of temperatures, and uh, pressures, remote displacements. There's commands object for load step one. Well, we're not doing that load step over. Let's go look at the second one. In this load step, we're going to activate the change in materials. It was commented out before. So now our second load step will begin by assigning this modified material property. There's the header to show us what we've done. Our analysis settings have been set for a restart. If we wanted, we could go in and have an alternative pressure in here. We could have other kinds of load changes in that second load step. Now we're ready to solve. Right-click and Solve. And if you go into Solution Information and look at it as text, it's starting from the second load step. You can see 1.4, 1.5, it's done. Let's scroll down and see what we can find in here. First of all, it makes reference to Resume ANSYS Data From, so it's doing a restart. Perform a static analysis, restart previously run analysis from load step 1. And there's sub-step 10, just as we requested. Scroll on down. And there's that heading that we put in the commands object, that second commands object. And you could see that it is assigning a change of materials. Set material of selected elements to 1006. And the selected elements are those of solid 3 that we planned in advance back up here when we saved a reference to them. Solid 3 was mat ID at that point. So we changed the materials. We can confirm that if we check inside the output. All we did was perform a second load step coming on at the end of the first. We've had a change in materials. Elements have been brought to life as before. There's the eAlive command. Let's go check our solution. Here's our total deformation and a stress plot, an elastic strain plot. If we check what's happening, it's the same kind of status here. Same sort of status in here in that second load step. Those Bonded elements are also in contact, but once again the frictional stress is very small, as is pressure, in comparison to the frictional stress and pressure of the frictional set. 
and once again that's because of the very small contact stiffness on the bonded contact pair which was there only to stabilize that body that was killed. So there's a quick look at doing a restart which included a possible change of loads and included an alternative setting in the commands object that changed an assigned material. Thank you for joining me.